Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today I have got a video showcasing and displaying some of the fantasy teams from all kinds of pundits, creators, um, personalities, whatever you want to call them, of uh, around Twitter, around YouTube and they very, very kindly allowed me to share their teams with you guys on my YouTube channel today. They're all absolutely fantastic, fantastic people, fantastic creators. They put some great stuff out on Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, you're going to recognize a few names, I'm sure. And if you are if you love FPL Twitter, as I do, then uh, I'm sure you're definitely going to recognize a few names here. But they've all allowed me to use their team. So thank you very much. Do go check all of them out. I'll have their ads on screen at all times uh, during the video. So yeah, definitely worth checking out all of these guys. They know loads and loads about fantasy football and just by looking at their teams, I think we're going to learn a lot about how we should potentially be setting up our teams for game week one. And by the end of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use the information that we find from these people's teams and we're going to combine them to create a Twitter FPL template. So a template I typically use very popular, the most popular players used by FPL pundits all across Twitter, all across YouTube. So we're going to make that team at the end as well. So, so much to come, guys. So much to cover in this video. I'm going to try and be quick, but I cannot promise you that this won't be a little bit of a long one. So let's crack straight on and have a look at some of the FPL teams around the globe. <laughs> So I have a feeling you might recognise this first one. It is Nathan Bacon's team. You might follow him on Twitter. You might follow him on YouTube. He's obviously got a very good YouTube channel. He's producing some great content. So do go check him out. But this here is his team that we're going to have a look at first of all. So Sanchez in goal, kind of to be expected. A lot of people are going for Sanchez in goal. That's not too surprising really um, at this point. We've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, another popular pick. Dinia is uh, he's probably one of the more interesting players in the defence. And then we've got Lamptey there, of course, as well. In midfield, we've got Salah Fernandez, pretty standard. And we've got Jota and Rafinha to complete the midfield. Rafinha, very, very popular pick amongst uh, you know anyone who's really into their FPL is usually going to be picking up Rafinha in their team. But Jota is quite an interesting one. I'm not really sure how this is going to play out. Is Jota going to be playing the first game? Is he not? We'll probably find out a little bit more information near the time. I think Jota did disappoint towards the end of the season last year. But if Jota gets a start, even if he doesn't, even if he comes off the bench, a game against Norwich is going to be a great start for Liverpool. So Nathan here has tripled up on his Liverpool assets. The only other way really to, to triple up on Liverpool is to go for Salah, Alexander-Arnold and Robertson. I don't really think it's viable to go for a Firmino or Ander Mane or, or someone like that as well as Salah. It's not really possible to do that. So this is a good way of tripling up on Liverpool if you really want to attack it that way. And up front, we've got Antonio, Watkins and Ian Nacho. Very nice indeed. Pretty, uh, pr pretty good. There's so many good strikers and these are just, I guess, three of the great strikers we have as options around that 7.5 million mark there. I think all three of them are actually 7. Point five million, um, which is quite crazy that there's so many options at that exact price. On the bench, we've got Foster, Brownhill, Ailing, and Mankio. Not a very strong bench, let's be honest. Uh, Brownhill is not really likely to pick you up more than one or two points. Ailing, obviously not bad, but not great fixtures in the first three. And then we've got Mankio as well there, so who's probably not going to pick up uh, too many points across the season either. So we have gone pretty hard on the first eleven here. I can see from from Nathan's team, but. There is at least some cover on the bench there as well. So, I don't know. He's arguably playing with you know, maybe 14 and a half players here with Mankio there. But, uh, well, maybe not even that because Fos uh, Foster's not going to play either. So, yeah, there's not an amazing amount of cover here on the bench. But for the starting eleven, it's nice with enough difference there. You know, Dina and Jota in particular, that's the, kind of the difference in this team. That he's got the good amount of template players and a couple of nice differentials in there as well. So yeah, all in all, pretty good. So this team is from FPL Swede. Swede put some absolutely fantastic content out on Twitter over the Euros. Some fantastic Twitter content. Really, absolutely, he absolutely smashed it. I was so, so impressed um, with everything that he was putting out there on Twitter. So congratulations for his uh, recent Twitter success. Do go check him out. I'm sure he'll get, he's going to be smashing it for FPL stuff as well. But he has already started with this team that he sent to me um, just uh, yesterday. So this is this is how he's lining up. He's got Backman in goal. So we're going for the, the Austrian goalkeeper who 
who plays for Watford. He um, obviously at, at Watford had an amazing, amazing record. Watford, the best defence in the championship. And I think that Swede is hoping here that Watford are going to replicate their defensive form that they showed in the championship up in the Premier League. We kind of seen it with other teams before. We've seen Sheffield United do really well defensively in the championship and then replicate that in their immediate season in the Premier League. We saw the same kind of thing with Wolves as well a couple of seasons ago. So it definitely does happen. It definitely can happen. So absolutely, uh, you know, I'm absolutely up for the back minute goal. I think that's an absolutely fine shout. Alexander Arnold, Lamptey, Again, they're going to be some recurring names here, as you can probably tell. But Dunk is the interesting differential in this defence here because I think most people are opting for Lamptey because he's just that little bit cheaper. But don't forget that Dunk has this amazing aerial presence and he does occasionally, you can't really predict when it's going to happen, but he does occasionally pop up with these headed goals and suddenly you're, you're, you're talking you know, 10 pointers, aren't you, from your defenders, 10 point plus uh, scores, which is obviously absolutely fantastic. So that's what Dunk is in there, in there for, presumably. We've got Salah, Rafinha and Fernandez in midfield and then Mares there as the differential in midfield as well. I have actually seen rumours that Mares might be leaving Manchester City. I don't know how true that is. Um, Man City, obviously, they're, they, they're trying to go on a bit of a spending spree. They've got so many wingers right now that it's kind of difficult to make a, a solid argument to who's going to start as a winger for Manchester City, even if Mares were to say, which, you know, he probably will stay to be fair, but there are rumours of him leaving. So not really sure what's going to happen there, but uh, Mares is definitely going to provide an interesting differential and Manchester City do have some very nice fixtures interspersed uh, over the first few weeks. Tottenham uh, to start off with might not even be a bad fixture itself. Up front we've got Watkins and Antonio which are uh, again some of these very very standard forwards that we would be definitely be interested in going for. We've got Tony in here as well which is a bit risky. I know a lot of people are hyping up Tony. I know a lot of people are very excited about Tony. Uh, 6.5 million for the top scorer in the championship last season. How's he going to do in the Premier League? Starting game against Arsenal Arsenal. I'm not 100% sure that we're going to see the best of Tony straight away, um, but Swede has gone through from the offset. And on the bench, we've got Foster, uh, Foster again, Ailing again in on the bench of teams, so that's maybe going to be a popular pick. And we've got Brownhill, a bit of a two point bandit, and uh, Omo Bamadele, who is he played a little bit for Norwich uh, at the end of last season. He's only a four million defender so if you are looking for that four million defender who is actually going to play some football uh Omar Bamadeli is not a bad shout to go for the problem is that Norwich have such bad fixtures for the first five game weeks that you're not really going to see any of it and we're not even 100% sure if this guy's going to play I, 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 Norwich going to you know play someone a bit more experienced when they're coming up into the, the Premier League not 100% sure but when he has played he's played quite well for Norwich so he is one to keep an eye on and four million is obviously a fantastic price for a, a presumably a, a semi-regularly starting defender at least. FPL tips you might recognize him for his Twitter or might you, you might recognize him from his YouTube as well he's actually smashing the YouTube content at the moment so fair play to Harry uh, so definitely go check him out if you are looking for some more YouTube stuff over here definitely um, worth a, a look at for sure but he's gone for a four at the back formation similarly similar to kind of what I've been trying to go for recently whereby um, <laughs> right away it's difficult to to really have four or four or more midfielders in the first game particularly if we want players like Rafinha but what's different about this team is that there isn't really any midfielders on the bench you can see that Basuma and Brownhill these are kind of one two point players every single game maybe three points on a good week um, and they're not probably not going to score too many points so really is, is this enough there's so much investment in in defense here we've got Robertson Alexander Arnold Lamptey and Shaw which is an ailing of course which is obviously a fantastic uh, bunch of defenders it really is but I'm wondering if maybe some money can be taken out elsewhere because I don't know if I would personally want to be forced into a situation where I can only play a maximum of three midfielders at any any given point. Midfield is usually the place where the most points are scored. So maybe there's a few players that, that are kind of missing out here. We talk, we, you know, we can perhaps talk about players like Buendia, maybe um, some slightly more differential players, like maybe Harrison or... Um, a Traore or Bowen or there are a few players who are pretty actually quite affordable in midfield and, and are capable of getting you those big points but Harry reckons there's going to be some clean sheets and, and fair play to him he's got a fantastic record in FBL so I mean who who, who am I to to, to, to criticise really you know he, he very much knows what he's doing uh, I can't argue with Calvert-Lewin I think he's a great shout Bruno and Salah in midfield absolutely fantastic as is Rafinha the defenders that he's selected are obviously fantastic picks and are likely to get a lot of points and he's probably thinking Robertson Alexander-Arnold even though they're defenders 
they're probably going to outscore a lot of midfielders at a similar price. So maybe that's the thinking there, which I completely understand. Danny Ings is a slightly interesting shout, but I understand why you'd perhaps want to stick one or two differentials in your team. I think that's important to make a rough template and then stick a couple of spicy flavors in there and i think that's what danny ings is doing in this team so let's see what happens there it could be a uh, pretty pretty uh, interesting to see what you can do but um yeah after last season it's quite a mystery to see what danny ings is going to produce if we look at the season before that amazing but this the last season not so much so yeah let's see how this one gets on FPL Casual has sent in his team to me as well, and we've got uh, a pretty some pretty standard players, but some pretty interesting players. So this is the actually the only team in this video that has gone without Bruno Fernandez, and you can see up front Bruno Fernandez has essentially been replaced by Harry Kane because you can't really have both. It's really difficult to fit in more than. Well, more than it's difficult to fit in more than one premium player. When we're talking about fitting in more than two premium players, it really does get diff uh, difficult. And we've also not got Trent Alexander-Arnold in this team as well. He has also been sacrificed. So there has been had to be a couple of sacrifices in order to fit Kane in. And I think that's why we're not seeing too many teams with Kane in at the moment because you have to make so many sacrifices in different areas to an extent where you kind of wonder... Is it worth it? Not really sure. But anyway, the Sanchez in there, obviously a very popular goalkeeper pick. For Fafana Lamptey, sure, fantastic defensive picks. We've got White there, Ait Nori, who you guys know I'm a very big fan of him as well in defence. Greenwood could be a really nice differential. Buendia is nice, Rafinha is nice, and obviously, obviously we've got Watkins and Calvert-Lewin there as well. So... It, 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 obviously, there's there's alarm bells ringing when you see a team without Bruno Fernandes and Trent Alexander-Arnold because we see these players as very important game week one players. But at the end of the day, if Kane ends up banging in the first few game weeks, then all of that goes out the window. And I think that's what Casual was trying to do here. He's trying to go for Kane and see if that could be his little differential amongst the higher ranking players who don't seem to be really going for Kane this year. FP Don't Take the L probably has the most template looking team out of the teams I'm showing you today, guys. And I really don't mean that as a criticism because template is template for a reason. It's because they're the best players. Now, some people like to sprinkle in a bit of differential in there, but there's not really too much for differentials in here, really, is there? So we've got Backman, I guess, is probably the biggest differential in this team. Um, but he's a goalkeeper, so you're kind of like, mm, does it really count as differential? We've got Alexander Arnold, Shaw Lamptey. Probably the best three defenders. In my opinion, the best three defenders to go for full stop. So, like I said, just because it's template doesn't mean it's bad. It actually it means the exact opposite. It means it's very, very good in every single aspect. Salah, Bruno, fantastic. Grealish is potentially a little bit of a differential. It really kind of, We're kind of wondering how that's going to pan out a little bit, aren't we? Is he going to move to Man City? Is he going to stay at Villa? For uh, FPL purposes, we probably want him to stay at Aston Villa, but let's see what happens there. Rafinha's fantastic. DCL's fantastic. Watkins, fantastic. And Tony um, is... We don't, we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but... If you look at his record from the championship, very good. And then on the bench, Foster, standard. Fafana, pretty pretty uh, standard, cheap defenders to go for. And we've got Basu uh, Basuma and Mankia, who are kind of the, uh, the the reserve, the guys in reserve who you're not really expecting too many points. They come on in an emergency, I suppose. Now we have FPL Architect that has um, a few different things going on. But overall, I mean, now that we've looked at so many teams already, you're probably starting to see some like recurring themes just starting to see some patterns forming aren't we we have got a few different players in this team though we've got Meslier who I very 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 much do like one of the best performing goalkeepers of last year the third highest scoring goalkeeper of last season and he just seemed to get better and better and better as the season progressed so an absolutely fantastic pick and it's interesting to see that this is actually the only team in this video who has spent more than 4.5 million on a goalkeeper every other team in this video has a 4 million backup goalkeeper and a 4.5 million starting goalkeeper so literally no money whatsoever spent on goalkeepers and i wonder is that is that potentially a bit of a mistake that actually architect has got a little bit ahead of this one he's gone for messier he's actually spent a little bit more on, on on a goalkeeper this year and given that goalkeepers are scoring a little bit more points over the last couple of seasons particularly if you get the right one and messier could very well be that right one maybe maybe this could actually work as a, a, a real a nice differential a nice uh, way of getting a little bit more points getting a, a little head start on some other players there are some interesting picks in here obviously Donk is starting Lamptey's left on the bench which kind of makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable the fact that Lamptey and Fafana are both left on the bench when both could very easily get clean sheets goal returns 
well, um, Lampard could get goal returns. And Fofana, obviously, clean sheets is more that we're, what we're looking for there. That does worry me a little bit, Lampty on the bench. I don't know if I'd be comfortable starting off a season with, with that. But, you know, you, you, if it's a case of having him on the bench or not having him at all, having him on the bench is probably going to be better, isn't it? Uh, but a player like Saar is kind of interesting against Aston Villa. I don't, I don't really know about this. Saar obviously was fantastic in the Premier League last time he played. He's obviously a fantastic player. How is he going to perform this year? Is he going to be getting goal returns regularly enough? Is Saar actually more likely to get you know points on the board in game week one than Lamptey I'm not actually sure I'm not sure I, I massively like Saar as a pick but other than that looks very very strong indeed FPL Goat is next and here is what he's got another team with Saar so maybe I'm actually the one making, missing a trick here and maybe a few of you guys will have some more things to say about Saar obviously I, I, I like what I've seen about him before but I'm just I'm always a little bit sceptical about going for these these uh, these newly promoted players. And I know he's played in the Premier League before and he did quite well. But how's it going to go this way? How's it going to go this time? Aston Villa is not an amazing fixture. I know Watford's fixtures do get pick up a little bit. Uh, they're not actually too bad in, in the starting times of the season. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe he will be a good pick. I, I just think I prefer... Someone like Traore, maybe uh, a Bertrand Traore at Aston Villa for six million to start off the season, and maybe just maybe that's just a little bit less risky, I suppose. I don't know, but other than that, we've got some interesting players in Kai Havertz. He's probably the the standout interesting player in this team, who has obviously got a very high ceiling if he plays as a striker. If that happens and he plays a striker for Chelsea, then obviously there's going to be points galore um, in, in that regard. And the rest of it, yeah, again, it's fairly standard players that we're very familiar with. And um, the only thing I perhaps I'm a little bit concerned about by this team is the fact that this team it really is uh, playing with 13 players because Foster's never going to play and Oberfemi is, is never going to play really either so it's not even a case of you've got a one point of backup there and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm you don't need a, a third choice uh, bench option maybe you don't really need that but I, I kind of found last season with the amount of injuries with the amount of rotation that actually a, a bench a, a stronger bench would have actually been really beneficial but because there is white and ailing there who are both above base level it's actually probably going to be absolutely fine because there is two definitely solid defensive options or, or on the bench there already very solid options so if, if it was a case of you know we had a Bissouma and Obafemi on the bench or something like that then maybe we'd have a problem if there was you know Mankio and Obafemi then perhaps we'd have a problem but because we've got Ben White and Luke Ayling on the bench I think actually that's absolutely fine and finally we're going to finish off with FPL reactions and this is how he's lining up uh, 4 4 2 formation for the first week but I think he's actually likely to continue as a 4 4 2 which is kind of interesting because most people are kind of thinking, okay, if I am going to go for four defenders in, in, in game week one, maybe we'll switch it up in future game weeks with uh, some of our bench. But in this case, we've got Davis, who isn't really likely to play. We've got Bissouma, who's not really likely to get more than one or two points, or maybe three points, if, if Brighton were to get a clean sheet there. Um, and it's kind of like, well, is there that many points here on, on the bench? Are we are we depending too much, on, depending too much on our, our first team? And are we def depending too much on our attackers? And, and the reason why this bench has to be so weak and how why it has to be a formation with so many defenders rather than and, and you know absolutely scrimping on the bench on in terms of the forwards and midfielders there's no fifth uh, uh no uh, sorry there's no sixth uh, seventh attacker so you have your kind of your, your, your seventh and your eighth attacker if you like there is no seventh usually maybe your eighth attacker is just bench fodder but there's no seventh attacker in, in this in this team and that's because we've got the triple up of Salah Fernandez and Kane and that is a super hard combo to go for. It means that you have to make sacrifices elsewhere. And fair enough, Alexander Arnold is in this team. But maybe this team is a little bit imbalanced in a way because there's very, very little on the bench. We're looking at the defenders really only. If you wanted to bring in a different uh, forward or midfielder, it's going to cost you two transfers to change your formation alone. And particularly if you like your players already, we have kind of got Tony in there as a second striker, which means we're missing out on Ichia Nacho, Watkins, DCL, Antonio, all these other strikers around the 7 million mark that we actually really like the look of, unfortunately, are going to be very, very difficult to get into this team. So... Yeah, it's uh, it's going all in on those premiums. Will that work? Well, I mean, they're premiums for a reason, so it absolutely it could work. It's definitely a viable strategy, but it's not very flexible. Um, that's the only thing that I would say. It's not very flexible, and I feel like 
we will be wanting to move towards formations with three at the back fairly soon or at least have the option to do that on certain game weeks we do want the options with that going forwards and in a way you are, there are transfers waiting to happen and we don't really want to plan transfers we want to uh, you know be able to use transfers pretty reactively in the start in uh, birth of the season but you know you know like i said with kane salah fernandez Trent alexander arnold all in one team they're going to score your points um and as long as they can outscore the points that would be scored by a more balanced team then it's not really an issue is it so let's have a look at the most popular players in this uh, in this video of all of these content creators, all of these these Twitter personalities or in the FPL community, who are they going for? Well, you can see on screen right now, guys. All eight of the people in this video, featured in this video, all eight teams featured Salah, Rafinha and Lanty. So if we're going to call players essential, according to the FPL community... These are guys who are essential, and it's not really surprising. All three of them are in my team, coincidentally, as well. So that would, if you included, included my team in this video, that would be nine out of nine. So Salah, Rafinha, Lamptey, by, by virtue of, you know, voting with your teams, that's, that's the situation that we kind of find ourselves in. So I think that's a very good sign, the fact that I've independently gone for these three. Each of these FPL guys on Twitter, they've independently gone for all of the, the, those three players as well. That's probably a good sign that we're all kind of reading the same stats. We're all reading the same information and coming to the similar conclusions, aren't we? Uh, we've got Fernandez, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, those are pretty obvious, really nice picks to have in your team as well. We've got Foster, a backup goalkeeper. I think we'll, we'll kind of understand why we're going for Foster. He's kind of... He, yes, he's a 4 million goalkeeper. No, he's not first choice. No 4 million goalkeeper is first choice. But at least we have seen Foster playing football in the last year right at least he has had some game time so this is possibility that he comes into the team if things don't go right with Backman and also he is the backup for Backman so if Backman gets injured you've got Backman in your team he gets injured you've got Foster who comes straight on into the team immediately so you don't have to worry about making a goalkeeper transfer if you like uh, we've got Watkins Short and Ailing also appearing five uh, times so in more than half of the teams featured Watkins, Shaw and Ailing all made an appearance. Ailing often on the bench there, but Watkins and Shaw definitely very popular and uh, and I think they're going to be some of the highest scoring players of this uh, year as well anyway. So that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So now we've got the most popular players. We know who everyone is going for, or at least we know how, who eight people are going for. We can put them into a team and try and make the most average team of all of the teams we've seen today and create officially the FPL Twitter template. Well, that's what I'm calling it anyway, the FPL Twitter template team. And here it is. And guys, I've even made a little logo. I even made a little logo for FPL Twitter. You know, maybe I should trademark it. Probably can't because obviously that's the Twitter logo with a crown on and some FPL colours. That's about it. But this is what the team looks like. And this is going to be the least surprising team you've ever seen. This is the most template, the most standard. This is the most base level team that you can possibly imagine. And that's exactly what we were trying to create. Trying to create the base team that you guys can have a look at and say, OK, we'll start off with this team and I'm going to add my own little spice to this team. But we know that typically the players that you see on screen now are the most popular pick amongst people who really really love their fpl so from that kind of um, from that kind of logic and some of these guys in this video have amazing rank histories like you know they're really consistently fantastically smashing fpl every single year so these guys know what they're talking about and this is the conclusion that they've come to that this team in front of you today guys is the best team that you can go for this is the best template team you can go for so this is definitely what i would be looking at if i'm coming in fresh you know, one of you guys, I don't really want to do too much of my own research, but I, I love FPL. I'll probably start off with a team very, very similar to this and maybe add one or two players, switch up a couple of things depending on what I like. And what I probably do with this team is maybe downgrade somewhere, maybe downgrade Buendia to a Traore or someone like that, or a, a Saar maybe, um, according to some of the other players that have been in this video. Maybe downgrade one of Ailing or Fafana and then upgrade Tony to a 7.5 million player. We do actually have, using this team, 1 million in the bank. So this team will give you 1 million in the bank. So you can even just not, not make any changes and just upgrade Tony to uh, you know an Antonio or an Iannaccio. That's probably what I would do as, as a baseline with this team. That's how I would spice it up from this template if you like that's probably what i'd do and go for something like that but there are definitely options 
This team gives you a two strong bench options. It gives you a 3-4-3 formation. You could even consider doing a 4-3-3 for the first week if you don't fancy playing Rafinha or someone like or Tony maybe in the first match day or game week, shall I say. Uh, you can maybe go for uh, Fofana in, in the first day instead. Um, but that's pretty much the conclusion that we've come up with and I think that's pretty good. No surprise that Salah and, and Bruno uh, are the captain and vice-captain respectfully because every single team you saw today, Salah was the captain, right? And most of the teams had Fernandez as the vice-captain as well. So those would be your template captain and vice-captain. I don't think I'd look any further than Salah for captain in game week one. I really think that's uh, you're asking for trouble if you're going for someone other than Salah. So there we go, guys. That is the template team. That's just about it, guys. We've done it. We've finally done it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy what you saw today, please do leave a like on this video and please do subscribe if you want more regular FPL content on your screens. I've got it for you pretty much every day for the next month. I got you back, guys. I got you back. Um, obviously, a massive thank you to all of you guys who are uh, the guys on Twitter who have very kindly allowed me to use their teams in this video. Their ads on Twitter are throughout of the video. You can see them on screen at all times. So do go check them out as well. All of them very much worth a follow, and if they're on YouTube, very worth a subscribe as well. These are some of my favourite people on Twitter. So that's why they're in this video because they're people that I really like. I like interacting with. I like seeing what they post, and I think. Think you guys are going to like them too so big up to all of them indeed and um, but aside from that maybe follow me on twitter as well if you fancy at fpl mate we've got the mini league code in the description if you fancy joining and seeing if you can beat me this year i'm sure a few of you will be more than capable of doing that but aside from that guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you later mates bye bye